Hi there! Today I'm going to talk to you about the Eastern Red Bat Lazioris Borealis for my Vertebrate Natural History video project. Here's today's special guest, the Eastern Red Bat. There is a close-up of one and then a collage of one in flight. The classification of the Eastern Red Bat follows that of all vertebrates up to subphylum vertebrata. Then we move into class Mammalia, order Chiroptera, which are bats, suborder Microchiroptera, which are echolocating bats, the family Vespertilionidae, which are insectivorous bats, the genus Lazurus, and the specific epithet Borealis. They are distributed over much of the United States, mostly the eastern part and some of the central United States. They also have a small range down off of the southeastern coast near the Bahamas. The red area there is, in, is a range where they are extinct and the yellow is where they are currently extant. Identification. So the red thick fur is very characteristic of this species. They're about three to five inches in length and there's generally no size difference between males and females. However, the males are generally more red than females and females have a more frosted coat. So they have kind of white tips on the end of their fur. And these are the bats that you generally see hunting near lights. So they're very commonly seen hunting in the evening. Habitat, they select for forest and forest edges, generally deciduous um, forest, but sometimes coniferous. And they select mostly, most often for sycamore, oak, elm, and box elders. And this is because these are a few tree species that they camouflage with very, very well. They hibernate in tree hollows and leaf litter during the winter and they can tolerate some human presence so you'll find them in rural areas and suburban areas but you generally will not find them in urban areas. So some of their survival techniques um, as I mentioned before they're insectivorous so they eat things like beetles and moths while they're hunting generally um, insects that are active at nighttime. The young stay with their mothers four to five weeks and are carried with her in flight so they are not left to be predated on. Um, they're generally very protected. That's a picture up on the top there. Their predators include birds of prey, um, particularly owls, domestic cats, and possums. Uh, raccoons also prey on them and some snakes will prey on the babies. Survival strategies, they use camouflage as I mentioned before. As you can see in that uh, bottom photo, they just look like a, a hanging leaf. They migrate to stay warm because they cannot stand long periods of cold. They are solitary animals, as I'll talk a little bit more about later. Um, so they're much less, less of a target for a predator. They have well-developed sight and hearing, which also helps them um, avoid predators. So reproduction um, is probably the most interesting part about this species. They mate once per year, which is fairly common in bats. The mating takes place in flight and sometimes they'll come crashing to the ground and that's how people often observe them and that's that top picture there. So one interesting thing that happens is the female holds the sperm until spring. So during her hibernation migration she holds the sperm. The gestation period is generally about 80 to 90 days and um, they do not give birth to single individuals. They give birth to twins. So um, there's always at least one set of twins in, in the birth of this species. And females have four mammary glands, which is another very interesting thing because the majority of all other bats only have two. So this species has a couple of interesting behaviors. They use echolocation like many other species of bat. They're solitary, solitary during most of the year, so they're not a social species. Um, they do come together for mating and migration. They migrate in flocks, and uh, one really interesting thing is that males and females migrate separately. They normally roost in the foliage of trees, but when they're hibernating, um, they're in uh, tree hollows, and they can emerge to feed during hibernation, which is very interesting, and they also feed at night. And there are my sources. Thank you.